this phosphorylation phosphorylation. Ah, photosynthesis. Ah, if you think it's love that makes the world go on, just think of this. We would not be here at all if not for photosynthesis. Giving us the oxygen that we all need to breathe from birth and absorbing CO2 to stop the warming of the earth. In a leaf cell there's an organelle that's called a chloroplast, lamellae which form the grana makes the surface area vast. Molecules of chlorophyll are sitting there quite peacefully till a beam of sunlight finds them, shaking them excitedly. <laughs> Uh, this will cause the loss of an electron from each molecule, making chlorophyll now positive and quite unstable. Through a carrier system known as PETS, the electron bouncing goes, making ATP the while, till back to chlorophyll it flows. Energy from sunlight also splits some water in the leaf. This is photolysis and it gives us oxygen to breathe. An electron left from the process goes on to make more ATP and some atoms of hydrogen will then reduce NADP. This completes the part that has been named the light-dependent stage. If I have some breath left, I can see what's left upon the page. NADP goes to the stroma, carrying hydrogen away to the Kelvin cycle, where it meets the compound PGA. With the help of ATP, the hydrogen can then decide to reduce the PGA to phosphoglyceraldehyde. From this compound, sugar is made, or starch, or cellulose, you see. Though most goes to regenerate a substance called RUBP. Ribulose bisphosphate is the name of this important bit. Cause it has the job of mixing CO2 and fixing it. This then forms some more PGA, which hydrogen there can then reduce. Not forgetting fatty acids, proteins, it can now produce. This then ends the Kelvin cycle or light independent stage quite enough to send the sanest person into a rage. But without the sun, remember, shining up there in the sky, we could not be learning photosynthesis and wondering why.